This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So sometimes people will reminisce about an old TV show or movie that they like and make a remark like, this couldn't have been made today. And usually when people say this, they're talking about some irreverent or old fashioned work that apparently couldn't exist because of today's PC culture. Almost as if the mere quality of being offensive somehow adds to its legacy. Films like Porky's and Revenge of the Nerds with their brazen sexism or TV shows with outdated sensibilities like I Dream of Genie or The Dukes of Hazard. I think this notion is kind of dumb for several reasons. Firstly, this represents just another example of people resisting changes to the cis hetero white male focused status quo. If there are less characters like this in TV and movies that marginalize and disparage certain groups of people, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. I know it's hard to imagine sometimes, but other humans exist in the world, and those people should have diverse and realistic representation in media. And so it's a good thing that we're moving towards that. And secondly, yeah, of course it wouldn't be made today. Why would anybody expect that? The culture and overall attitude of society was way different in the 70s and 80s, as you would expect. So why would anybody think that the media being created wouldn't also be different? And on top of that, this kind of implies that in today's PC culture, nobody gets away with making irreverent or taboo content, which is obviously ridiculous. Have you ever watched Big Mouth or Two and a Half Men or Deadpool or South Park? Park. Have you ever been on YouTube before? It's a madhouse. Anyway, perhaps the quintessential they couldn't make this today example is the 70s TV sitcom All in the Family, which starred Carol O'Connor as Archie Bunker, a white working class father whose most notable characteristic is that he is kind of a huge bigot. Ironically, a TV special just aired the other day where an ensemble cast of actors, including Marissa Tomei, Jamie Foxx, Woody Harrelson, and many Many others did a live performance of episodes from All in the Family and the Jeffersons. So I guess they could have made it today. But anyway, this got me thinking about how sitcoms throughout the years have handled the topic of race and bigotry. So yeah, that's what this video is about. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. So I really, really love the show Roseanne. Now, of course, Roseanne Barr herself seemed to not be that great of a person throughout the years. But you can pause and watch my video about separating art from artists if you want to know how I feel about that. But anyway. Beyond the fact that the show Roseanne is hilarious, it attempted to paint a semi-realistic picture of what it was like to be poor in America. Unlike most sitcoms, a fair amount of episodes didn't have neatly wrapped up happy endings, and the initial series as a whole didn't even have a happy ending. And that's sort of the reality of most working class people in America. You just kinda try to survive, but you usually never really get to see the other side. Now Roseanne mostly dealt with class issues, but it often delved into other topics such as domestic violence, homophobia, and racism. One of the most memorable episodes involved the title character Roseanne scolding her son DJ because he didn't want to kiss a girl in the school play because she was black, only later to have to confront her own prejudices when that girl's father shows up at her restaurant late at night. I appreciated these scenes because they acknowledged that a person who was essentially good, or at least trying to be, could still hold harmful prejudices that are not necessarily evident on a surface level. But I feel like depictions of racism and bigotry on TV have rarely been this nuanced throughout the years. In the 80s and 90s, sitcoms became well known for their very special episodes that dealt with topics that were much more serious than the average episode, usually touching on things like alcohol and drug abuse, bigotry, sexuality, violence, and even sometimes death. I mean, they killed Sandy, yo. Growing Pains actually had a lot of these special episodes. Like there was this other episode where Kirk Cameron gets a job at a convenience store and the racist shop owner gives him special treatment over his non-white co-workers. And in typical sitcom fashion, he eventually realizes the right thing to do and heroically confronts the bigot and quits the job and so on. And throughout the years, many sitcoms would have episodes tackling race and racism. Now of course, you could analyze depictions of racism in any medium, but I'm focusing on sitcoms in this this video because 
I like sitcoms. But I fully acknowledge that the nature of the format means that they usually want to have everything wrapped up in 30 minutes. And when we're talking about very special episodes, the easiest way to do that is often to have a character who at least by the end is revealed to be an unambiguous villain that our protagonist can take the moral high ground over. You know, you've got a lot to learn about the real world. Yeah? Well, I won't be learning it from you. I quit. Sometimes the villain is unnamed or conceptual in nature, but the moral is generally that there are bad people out there, and as long as we don't spray paint the n-word on someone's property, we'll be alright. Even in the recent revival of the show Roseanne, which I mentioned earlier, they revisited the issue of racism. But this time, instead of a thought-provoking depiction of implicit bias, we have a scene with a cartoon racist that Roseanne gets to play hero against. Maybe you can help her carry the groceries out to her camel, too. The very special episode still happens sometimes, but it's mostly a relic from the 80s and 90s. These days, sitcoms usually exist in some kind of vacuum where either serious issues like bigotry don't actually exist, or where they seem to be the only thing that exists. Another thing you see in sitcoms a lot, especially nowadays, is racism and bigotry being played for a joke. Some of the time this qualifies as satire, but I feel it's mostly there for laughs. I did a whole video about how Tina Fey straddles this line in 30 Rock, but it's incredibly common. The trend here is the existence of a character, often a main or recurring one, who under normal scrutiny would be considered fairly awful, but they're generally tolerated if not excused for their behavior by the other characters and usually also also by audiences. Why would you think this is an appropriate gift? Um, well, <laughs> you are black, right? <laughs> Usually, the rationale for this casual acceptance of their insensitivity is that they're, they're well-intentioned, but they're just clueless and don't know any better, usually because of their environment or upbringing. And while these characters may experience a minor setback or an awkward confrontation because of their behavior, which demonstrates that in these universes, being racist is at the very least socially unacceptable, they are rarely given long-standing reasons to change or improve. Likely because clueless character says something racist is an easy way to get a laugh, and when you've got to pump out a script every week, you don't want to give that up. Perhaps the most classic example of the sympathetic bigot is the aforementioned Archie Bunker from All in the Family. And while Archie's off-color and often unambiguously racist commentary was definitely the source of a lot of cheap laughs, the show took a decidedly more thoughtful look at racism and other controversial topics than many of the other examples I've given so far. You never told us how you feel about black people. Well, you sure got a hand it to him. I mean, two years ago, there was nothing but servants and janitors. Now they're teachers and doctors and lawyers. They've come a long way on TV. <laughs> While Archie doesn't necessarily become enlightened at any point during the series' run, the main theme of the show revolves around him constantly having his prejudices challenged in a changing world. He almost never gets away with saying something awful without someone or something calling him out on it. In some scenes, he literally walks away and tries to change the subject when confronted, an overt metaphor for many people's stubborn resistance to social progress. I especially enjoyed the interactions between the bunkers and the the Jeffersons. Nothing forces Archie to tackle or maybe even preserve his outdated sensibilities more than his black neighbors who are not only smarter and more savvy than he is, but are also upwardly mobile. George Jefferson is a successful businessman while Archie is stuck in a blue collar job on a loading dock. All in the Family was a bold show, and as you might imagine, most of the issues it discussed are still relevant today, unfortunately. And people will continue to debate whether the character of Archie Bunker actually helped to normalize and justify bigotry rather than fight it, but I do have to say it is kind of hard to watch nowadays. Bunker was depicted as an out of touch old man, but his worldview sounds almost exactly the same as modern day white nationalists, which is kind of creepy to listen to. It ain't their problem. 
problem, it's our problem. These people are stepping up in life and we're moving down. The show made sure to emphasize that Archie was a good guy deep down, but the show was also from his perspective for the most part. So we mostly got to see his fears and his discomfort and not really the real world impact of his harmful beliefs. But All in the Family deserves credit for tackling bigotry head on in a way more nuanced than good guys versus bad guys. It's one of the only sitcoms to accomplish that in my opinion. You might expect such a popular show to influence future shows to try similar things. And it's true that many sitcoms in the years since All in the Family have had overt social commentary, including its own several spiritual successors and spin-offs and spin-offs of spin-offs and some shows have managed to address social issues in an interesting way like the aforementioned Roseanne and the more recent Blackish which I personally think might be the perfect show but in general sitcoms since All in the Family have relegated serious discussion of things like racism to one-dimensional very special episodes if they don't avoid the topic altogether and don't get me wrong there are a lot of undeniably great sitcoms that address political issues in a serious way. A Different World, Maud, One Day at a Time, Golden Girls, Rock, The Carmichael Show, and even more dramatic comedies like Dear White People and Orange is the New Black. The list could go on. But I feel like most of those shows generally played it safe with depictions of race issues that were either too dumbed down or too melodramatic to represent reality. And look, the evil bad guy who spray paints slurs on people's cars exists in the real world. I've met people like that. But it's such an incomplete story about the reality of discrimination in America. It's so much more. It's marginalization, implicit bias, disenfranchisement, colorism, microaggressions, intersectionality, stereotype threat, and lots of other things that you can Google after watching this video. I also understand that generally discussing social issues is not the aim of a sitcom. But why shouldn't it be, at least some of the time? One of the reasons I love sitcoms so much, beyond the fact that I just love comedy and jokes, is how they can talk about real life things like family and love and adulthood and careers and yes, even politics. And they can bring you into a world that you would not have otherwise experienced. And if done right, they can do this in a way that makes you feel positive and hopeful because you've been laughing the whole time. And listen, I like a good drama show just as much as anybody else, but most of them just leave you bummed out at the end of the day. Like, does anything good ever happen on this show? So sitcoms, as well as stand-up and comedic films, can play an important role in social discourse, I think. Because while I appreciate the escapism of political utopias found in shows like The Cosby Show or Parks and Recreation, I think these serious discussions are needed now more than ever. That's just me, though. What do you think? Thanks for watching, and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes across many categories including art and animation, music, finance, and productivity. Speaking of which, being more productive has been one of my 2019 goals, so I've taken advantage of several Skillshare courses to help with that. Most recently I've been watching this great productivity masterclass from YouTuber and author Thomas Frank. Premium membership will get you unlimited access to all of these classes and more so you can learn and improve in multiple areas at the same time if you want to. It's less than $10 a month, but Skillshare is allowing me to hook up my audience with a two-month free trial. But only the first 500 of you to sign up via the link in the description will be able to take advantage of this great deal. So you better hurry up and sign up by visiting the link in the description where the first 500 visitors will get two months of unlimited access to thousands of high quality classes for free. And remember, by supporting sponsors like Skillshare, you not only get access to a great service, but you also support me and allow me to take my content to the next level.